Welcome back to another video. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, I'm going to try to restore this underexposed photo of some cherry blossoms in my backyard. Now, I intentionally photographed this underexposed, but sometimes this could be an accident where you photograph something underexposed and then you got to bring it back and you want to keep the life and the color. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and tap on Brilliance AI. All right. So, and if you see me uh, struggling to select something, it's because I'm using a Wacom tablet. Um, so I'm using my Wacom tablet and for whatever reason, I can't get it into the camera. There it is. All right. I'm using my Wacom tablet today. And that's mostly because I want to figure out if I actually enjoy using it or not. I'm debating on selling it. So if you use a Wacom tablet, let me know what it's like for you in the comment section below. Uh, with that being said, I now have a pretty good uh, exposure. And, you know, honestly, if we go before and after, if I really wanted to, I could stop here. The good news is I did shoot this in raw and I wasn't like crazy underexposed, but maybe I want to go a little bit further because if we look over here at these leaves, which you can make out that it's a leaf, but it's more yellow than it is green. And I want to make separation between the colors that much more noticeable. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. And let's see if we can do that using one of our effects. All right. So we'll come over here to effects. If I can get it, come on. I don't know why it won't select it. All right. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go with replace color first because I think sometime, or actually, you know what? We'll start with color enhancer because I think color enhancer will work the best for this particular uh, look that we're going for. Uh, we're not trying to replace the color. We're trying to enhance the color. All right. And this is how you start to decipher which tools you grab whenever you want to edit your photos. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my eye picker tool here. And I'm going to drag this around just so that way it selects the correct color on the color range. So it looks like it wants me to populate some oranges here. That's what it sampled. So let's just go ahead and pull that over to the yellows. And you can see that that's starting to bring back some of the green in the overall image. Uh, now we'll jump over to the yellow channel and let's kind of push that towards green and see if we can uh, really manipulate this color. And then we'll come into greens and let's just push the saturation and maybe push it towards yellow because we're starting to get some color bending. And I don't know, that's looking okay. Maybe not the way that I would want it to look. So let's go ahead and let's close this down. So let's just turn off that effect, minimize it, and we'll come over to replace color. And now that we've seen that the color enhancer probably won't get us where we're trying to go, I'm going to go ahead and sample this color in here. You can see what it's doing there. I think I need a larger range. We'll zoom in here because I want that entire leaf to be selected. So we'll just go ahead and pull this range up. I feel like maybe something around here is probably going to do well. Uh, and what I'm also looking at is the inside of the cherry blossoms, all right? Because that's part of the color that's being selected. Now I'm going to come down here to my actual color that's being replaced. We'll pull this up and bring this more into the yellow area. And look at that. Now we're getting a more lively green. And I don't want to go too green like this because that doesn't look real at all. Uh, I want something that is more on the yellow uh, border of green and yellow. All right. So that's what I am shooting for. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Take a look at the before and after and see 
how that's doing. I think that's doing pretty good, but it's a little too vivid, too strong, and you already know it. I'm gonna come over here to my blend modes for the replace color filter that I just used, and I'm going to come down here to color, all right? Not luminosity, man, I'm telling you, using a Wacom tablet, you gotta get used to it. I'm gonna select color. The reason I'm selecting color is because I don't want that to impact the tones in my image. I only want the replace color filter to change the color. Now, I am starting to see inside of the uh, stamens here, I think that's what it's called, uh, on the inside of the flower, those also turn to that yellow green look that we had for the leaves. So what I'm going to do here We'll come over here and with a brush, I'm just going to paint this away from this area. Sometimes that's all you got to do in photo editing. You just paint away the areas that you don't want to have masked or I'm sorry, that you don't want to have affected. And that's the beauty of working with a mask. So bringing back the natural color of the insides of the flower, pretty sure it's a stamen, but don't quote me. And I think that that is looking pretty good. Let's see here. And I don't need it to be like perfect around the entire image. Maybe get this piece. That piece really could get masked out or retouched out. And I'm not worried about these all the way over here. So now we can go ahead and zoom out. And let's look at our before and after. So here is the original image. And here is the updated or the more vibrant, uh, colorful image. Now cleaning up my effects palette here. We'll just go ahead and delete these other items. And we'll add another filter. And with my flower photos, I really, really enjoy adding the sunshine filter. It's a personal preference. Um, and I, it just adds in something that isn't there already. So I'll saturate it a little bit more and it really just helps these colors pop. Like if I turn this off and on, you could see it's like a night and day difference. And this photo, I don't think will benefit from having a glow on it. Uh, and I like the, the, uh, composition of the image overall. So I think that that is probably all I would need to do to this image for fun we can try adding in a dynamic contrast and maybe, you know, we'll go soft because I think soft is the most appropriate. And then we'll come to our mask. Let's invert the mask and then we'll grab our brush, change it over and just paint on the inside of the flower. You can see that it brings out a little bit more of the detail on the main flower here, which I think is the only place that needs the, uh, the dynamic contrast. It's a subtle adjustment probably isn't even coming through on YouTube, but it is something that I see on the screen as I'm editing. So what else can we do to this photo? So before I mess the photo up, right? I like to create snapshots. So let's go over here to the snapshot. We'll make a new one and we'll just call this edit primary. Okay. So now that I have the edit primary, I can come over here, add another filter and maybe we'll go with the antique filter because you know, it's one of those photos where this could work out and I just like to cycle through each one of these. I actually like this one, Cairo. And we'll just push the brightness and maybe pull down on the opacity because it doesn't need to be that strong. And 
you know, this is more like a LUT or an effect. And then, you know, now we're just kind of playing an on one and I'm taking you along for the ride, the journey. Uh, I could fade this and make it more of a faded overall look. I can come over here to my blend options and I could play around with some of these. So if I hover over, let me just move my mouse. There we go. If I just come through here and see which one I like, like dark color actually looks pretty good with this particular antique filter and the settings that are applied. So I keep that in mind. And this is how you can come up with different styles, uh, especially if you feel like you're in a rut. The blend modes inside of On One really do open up a lot of creative uh, freedom or license. And that's just adding in the color, which is kind of cool. And then luminosity even gives it a different look. But I kind of dig the dark color look. Now, uh, I do have the opacity pulled down. If I pull it down even further, I could probably blend this a little bit better. So if I turn this off, really, I really have a hard time with targeting this little dot with the uh, the Wacom tablet. I don't know. My penmanship is not very good. But just turning this off and on, you can see what it's doing to the overall image. And I think that it looks pretty good. Now, I could go crazy with it, go 100%, but I don't think that that looks good, especially in the background. Uh, this is definitely one of those adjustments that you want to have subtly applied because it does take the image from uh, one place to another. So we can create a new snapshot and we'll just call this antique. So I'm going to get rid of the antique filter now and let's see what else we can do. Uh, one of the fun things is the bleach bypass. Sometimes adding in bleach bypass really does help enhance the image. Uh, for flowers, it's not the first thing that I would think of adding, but you know, let's find out if it's even worth having on the image overall. So maybe we'll increase the brightness because I do want to keep brightness in the flowers. Uh, you get a detail slider with the bleach bypass and this could be helpful. I feel like if I wanted to increase the details, I would do it selectively uh or locally so let's just go ahead and reset that okay and let's see what the saturation allows us to do saturation okay i can dig that and then we'll play with the amount right uh if i wanted to go a little bit darker with the flowers then increasing the amount really does help with that and i don't know if i want to because like over here the flowers just look like they're burned and that's not the look that i'm going for so i'll probably pull the amount back and maybe even the overall opacity of what this effect is doing now you could you could tint your image using the bleach bypass. So a tint is a good way of just adding in another cohesive color. All right. So what I would do is open up this little indicator or this little color box, choose the picker tool, come over here and select somewhere inside of the photo, then just pull this up. So, the color that I'm adding to the photo is already present and it's not something that's like overwhelming and obnoxious like this. Now, even though this doesn't look bad, right? Um, it, it's all of what you're going for. And, you know, I, I feel like Mother's Day is coming up, probably making this image for my mom because she likes these. So I'm just going to go ahead and select right here again and keep it relatively low on the opacity you can go crazy i don't recommend that because you lose all of the other color detail in your image um and you also got to pay attention to what it's doing to the leaves because remember we edited those earlier and you know i completely just ruined those but that could be the style that i wanted to add uh so now 
I can also come over here and try out the blend modes. If there's a common theme in my videos, it is try stuff and see what works. All right. Now, if I wanted to go like crazy bright, then screen really is going to help me. And I don't know if that's what I want. So we'll just keep coming down the line. Now, soft light and overlay, they're going to add contrast to the image. So, you know, watch for that if that's something that you want to do. Uh, but I love that you don't have to be an expert at blend modes. All you have to do is scroll through it and see which ones you like. Now, color is always a favorite of mine just because it's so subtle. I keep all of the tonal information. Like if I go with saturation, that's also a nice one. Actually, I like saturation for this particular image. So I'm going to select that, not color, saturation. There we go. Uh, I like what it's doing to the overall image. So if I turn off the bleach bypass, it's not doing much of anything or nothing's there turn it back on and it just punches through with the overall image. So we're going to go ahead and add a new snapshot and we'll call this bleed. And you see, I'm just very easily and quickly developing my own styles, looks, and I'm just playing around. I have no script. I had no idea of how I wanted to edit this image uh, before I started working with it. So on one is very forgiving in the regards that you could just open it up and start playing around with your images and end up with something that is really, really nice that you can start working. All right. Uh, and you could share with the world. And that's honestly the reason why I started this channel. But I am going to stop there because I could go on and on. There's just so many tools that I could start adding in. Uh, like for this particular one, if I wanted to, I could come into color balance. I know I said I was going to stop, but you know, I could come into color balance and I could really start to manipulate the colors and make like a really funky color grade, maybe something like that. And then with the highlights, we'll go with like a yellow and you know, I could pull down the opacity to really fade this in. And then if that doesn't quite get me where I want to go, well, then I can come and explore with my blending options and see if anything stands out that I'm like, hey, this really looks cool on the overall image. Now, again, I think whenever you're working with color and you have a question or a concern, I always like to def default my blend mode to color because it's the most forgiving blend mode whenever you're modifying color. And I like to separate in my images personally, the tone and the color uh, processing. All right. Which is why over here in develop, I am primarily focusing on the tones. Now there is some color information that gets modified as you can see with the white balance. And that's just because this is a raw image and in raw images, you can reset the white balance. So I personally like to do that over here on the develop tab. And sometimes I mess with saturation and vibrance. It just depends it really does. Uh, but after that, everything else I do is usually going to be an effect that modifies the color. And I usually change the blend mode. Uh, not all the time. Um, if I feel that whatever is happening is changing the overall tonal values, then I do change the blend mode of the effect. So that way I maintain those. And then of course, if I wanted to really take control of my tonal value, that is where local adjustments come in because local adjustments are applied to the image underneath all of the effects. So anything that I do with a local adjustment, it will apply underneath all of the effects and it allows me to really take control of what's happening. And of course I have blend options for that. So I really am going to leave it there. I dropped a lot in this one video and really my intent was just to show you how to recover a photo from something that was 
underexposed to something that you would be proud of hanging up on a wall or sharing with the world. So let me know what your thoughts are about this technique or just on one in general down in the comment section below. If you want to pick up a copy of On One Photo Raw and save some money, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 when you check out. I make a small commission, but you get to save some money, so it's a win-win. If you got questions, you already know what to do. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.